Hello everyone, my name is Lloyd and with me is Ali and together we're going to demonstrate to you how easy it is to bring up new sites on the WebTela Secure Extensible Network or the WebTela SEN. This is the topology that we have for the demo today. On the left hand side we have two branch sites, site 1 and site 2. We have a VH router sitting at each of these sites and we're going to demonstrate the bring up of the VH routers. Now, these can be viewed as branch sites of a typical large enterprise network. On the right hand side, we have the three control elements of the WebTela SEN, and these have already been set up. Now, this can be viewed as a typical one time initial setup that's needed for the entire system. Firstly, we have the VBond orchestrator, which is the, the daemon that all of the entities connect to initially in order to discover the other control elements on the network. It is also the only entity on the WebTela SEN that needs to be publicly addressable. And this is because the VBond orchestrator orchestrates the NAT traversal mapping across the other elements in the network. Next, we have the vSmart controllers. This is a centralized controller that distributes the routing security and policy information across the entire network. We're using two vSmart controllers to demonstrate the redundancy or high availability of the system. And lastly, we have the vManage network configuration and management system. This is a, a dashboard in, uh, into the health of the entire WebTela SEN. And it's also a, a central mechanism to configure all the elements and, and deploy zero touch provisioning if needed. And as we demonstrate the bring up of the VH routers on site one and site two, you're gonna see that they automatically set up a secure control channel to each of the two vSmart controllers and also a secure data channel between the two VH routers. And of course, as you keep adding VH routers on new branch sites in the network, the secure data channel gets set up between all the VH routers on the network. And although all communication between the various elements on the WebTela SEN is secure and encrypted by default right from the very first packet, there's not a single line of security configuration necessary to bring up the network. And this is because of a patented mechanism of device authentication and key distribution across the WebTela SEN. So without much ado, I'm going to turn it over to Ali, who's going to demonstrate the bring up of sites one and site two. Ali. Hello, everyone. So what we're going to do, what we have listed in front of us right now, is the console access to the V edges. Now, as part of the configuration for this VEdge, there's three primary blocks that you'll have to configure. The first block is the system block, which provides the unique identifiers that are required by the Viptela solution to understand the devices and enforce policies and make decisions and all of the other good stuff. The second block is configuring the transport side, which is the WAN interface on which the tunnels will be established. And then, of course, you set up your service VPNs, what routes you want to propagate, uh, how data will actually flow. So let's just get down right to it. By default, the VEdge comes with only your standard AAA admin user password. Um, the OMP protocol that the Viptela overlay network runs, the security IPsec settings that will be reused by our uh, data tunnels, and of course the default VPNs that are reserved by Viptela VPN 0 for transport and VPN 512 for management. All other VPNs are considered service VPNs. So, go in. So we first specify a host name, e one. Let's say system IP one, site ID one, vbond at ten dot one dot fourteen dot fourteen. The organization name, which is required for the certificates that are signed. In this particular case, we are using our own local setup, and so we have specified this organization name. This organization name will be specific to yours when you set up your certificate signing authority. And once you've, you're done with the changes, you commit those changes and they take effect. 
And you can see the host name has changed. And this pretty much completes the system block. These are the only identifiers required. Then you can proceed to the WAN side. The VPN 0 is what we consider the transport VPN. And so for this, we'll use interface ge 0 slash 0, key address 10.1.15 slash 24. And then we'll specify that this interface is the interface used to create the tunnels. And make sure that it is not shut down. And this takes effect. Now, because we gave it a static address, we also give it a default route so that it knows where to go. And so now we'll just test out that it can reach the V-bond. And you can see that it's able to. So we're going to take a look at the control setup. And we'll see that the control connections have already been set up. It's a pretty speedy process, and we're all up with the different vSmart and the vManage controllers, the vManage network management system, and the vSmart controllers. And of course, Ali, you have two vSmart connections because you have a redundant control connection. Yes, uh, that is one of the advantages of having that. So you can provide HA, and even if multiple vSmarts go down, it is very easy to deploy several of them and deploy them in different data centers and have a, a very, very highly available system. And then we'll currently look at the BFD sessions. And we'll see that because there are no other sites in the network, there are no data tunnels set up. We can also specify multiple VPNs and put different interfaces. Um, let's, for instance, let's just do a loopback. Oops. Let's see, address. And you will see that the configuration has your basic system requirements, your WAN interface, and the service VPNs that you create. We'll go to the second one now. And we'll say system hostname, ch2, site ID 2, system IP 2.2.2, the vbond address, the organization name for the certificate authority. And that completes the system setup. We'll set up the WAN interface. Make sure it's turned on. Specify that this is the tunnel interface. And give a static a default route in this VPN. And we'll just Verify that we can ping the vbond. Yes, we can. We will verify that the control setup is also going to go through. Just a second. And there we go. It's in the challenge state. And it's up. There we go. Now we'll check the BFD tunnels. And we'll see that the device that we first configured, there are now IPsec tunnels set up between these two guys. Can we also check on the first VH1 if we have the data tunnels? And there we go, X1. And then, of course, once you want to start looking at routing tables and so forth, um, right now it's, it sees this one that it's connected. We'll configure the same VPN on the other guy. Interface, loopback one, 2.2.2, .2 .2 .2 .2. And we'll see that it is able to receive the route advertised by the first VEDGE over OMP. And that pretty much completes your bring up.